What's up, guys? Today we are back again with another horror-related movie discussion, this time about Halloween Kills, uh, the sequel to Halloween 2018, which itself is a sequel to Halloween's 1978, which is super confusing. It's like Halloween 2.3, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, you heard them joining me right now is the man the super sexy brother himself mj from mj tv and also link murdoch please go down to the description section below to check out the links and go show him some love but man before we get into this why don't you say hello to everyone listening hello everyone listening oh my god but uh <laughs> no i'm happy to be discussing halloween with you man it's always a pleasure if you guys have been around for a while now, then you probably know what the dynamic duo is. You probably remember Big Sexy himself. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's get into it, man. Yeah, okay. So, we're here to talk today about Halloween Kills, as I said. And you got it, you got it from the title. You got it from the thumbnail. The fact that this trilogy in itself is a trilogy, right? And we don't even really have all of that much to go off of. In fact, if, if it was a normal year and everything was copacetic, we would be just a couple weeks out from getting to see this film. And honestly, I've made it absolutely no secret that Halloween 2018, I felt, was kind of garbage. I, I just felt like it was the amalgam of all of these really interesting ideas that were already explored in better ways throughout the entire franchise. And then they just ignored all of those movies and decided to repackage them in kind of the worst way possible. With that being said, though, these next two films do offer up an opportunity to do something wholly new and original and something very unique to the franchise going forward and that's something i really want to focus on now because this is essentially the sequel it's acting as the halloween 2 to the last film setup and the tr teaser trailer that we've gotten seems to indicate that it's taking place or s starting at least directly after the events of the previous film i'm wondering do the names of these movies give us an indication of what this series is really going to be? And that is not just characters living with this consequence of Michael, him disappearing and showing up on the next Halloween and then just tormenting them throughout the next couple of years, but really is it all going to be placed within one night? And I, I just love that idea so much because it really takes the same thing from the first sequel of Halloween where it's kind of a direct continuation but just runs with it to the nth degree where you kind of set up all this stuff in the first film there's a lot of characters that either disappear or aren't really established or focused on in any way shape or form but that's because they're kind of waiting in the wings and Michael is going to terrorize people this one night 40 years later that kind of culminates with a brutal finish for the second film and leads to the dawn of a brand new day on november 1st at the very end of the trilogy michael's dead and everything is done and it's all complete to me that's an interesting take for the franchise and i want to get your thoughts on it mj i remember the first time you brought this up to me we were talking on the phone and you brought up the idea that you know, this whole trilogy could all take place like in one night, you know, 2018, Halloween kills and then Halloween ends. And that sounds very cool. It makes some sense when you think about it, because I remember reading like back when Halloween 2018 was the whole big news was that originally the sequel was supposed to follow back to back. and They were going to release them like that. So in my head, I wondered when they changed that whole plan of the 2018 film dropping and then the sequel dropping uh, pretty close to it and almost in a consecutive session back to back. I wonder what else changed. Did they actually change the way the movie was? Did they change things around to make it fit in a more standalone singular fashion where it was going to stay the Halloween 2018 for the next year or two until they dropped the sequel? And that raises a pretty big question because Mark's right. Even though I had a fun time watching 2018, the movie was very safe. The movie had a lot of stuff that we'd already seen before. It didn't really do anything that was like groundbreaking. Now, the sequel, though, has 
the chance to kind of take that and now we can kind of see the creator's true vision of this trilogy we can kind of see what they want to do now that they got the whole nostalgic kick out of the way and they got everything that they i can't even imagine what else they could pay nostalgia to dog (laughs) well you know what you know you say (laughs) you say that you say that but one of the things that has kind of made me a little bit worried about this sequel is john carpenter and them have come out and said that it's going to feature mad people from Haddonville, right? Like the, the, the townspeople are mad at Michael and they're going to want to get revenge on him for everything that he's caused. And I'm sitting there going, that's great. We freaking saw that in the fourth film. Like we don't need, or is it the fifth film wherever Loomis literally creates a mob from drunk that was and redneck fourth. Yeah. We yeah. don't have a police force. Yeah. We don't have a police. Force. And he's like, that 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 movie is so great. Can I just interject real quick and say that movie is so great because Loomis never acts more like a villain than he does in that movie. Like he just does whatever he wants. Like from the from literally, I think too onward with everything in him in the film, he just acts like a villain. Like he straight up murders a guy just trick or treating in the second film. <laughs> like he incites a mob rule in the fourth film, and it just gets worse from there. But no, my my point is is they've already said that we're going to see an angry mob, and I'm like, okay, but we've done that before. Like, is this just going to be this whole trilogy? And it, it does make me worry, but like you said, there's so much that they've already taken that they're going to have to start coming up with new stuff for themselves. And a lot of that can really, really flesh out this entire trilogy flesh out the entire franchise that they're trying to create off of the first one and make it wholly original uh one thing i will you know one thing i will tell people who are curious and i don't know if it's going to be on your channel by the time that this video goes up but if you're curious go subscribe or check out mj's channel and look at it every now and then because he's going to put up a video that we did about dr loomis and his character going forward in this trilogy that I think is just absolutely the best way to not only use his character, but to help explain some of the weirdest logical leaps I think this last movie went through in order to flesh out his characters and set up the entire narrative. So I, I that's a little plug for that one because that was one of the best videos I think we've done in a while. Yeah, it really brought us back. I mean, again, if you guys remember, man, we used to crank out videos every single day, the dynamic duo, <laughs> and, you know, doing discussions every day. That's what our game was, man. You know, we ran that shit. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I feel like the need to, like, uh, just motivate us and uplift us there. But anyways, um, yeah, that video should be coming out soon. Uh, a lot of Halloween content for October and kind of what we're doing here. We're gearing up for Halloween with this. And it makes me sad, bro, because... As much as, you know, we talk about 2018 here and that, it's like, it's still Michael Myers, man. I was really looking forward to this movie dropping <laughs> in this October. <laughs> I exactly. really was. <laughs> and, and this is one of the things that I'm looking forward to with this entire trilogy is if it's all on one night, I feel like it would help raise the stakes for the story that they're trying to tell. And it would do, it would go a long way to reaffirm some of the stranger things that happened and were forgotten about during 2018's runtime like the i you know i excuse me i don't remember everybody's name i should have looked it up before the beginning of this video but you know the the granddaughter's Lori's granddaughter's boyfriend just disappears after the party he, yeah. he he's a jerk and then he disappears and never to be seen again they don't use they don't use uh billy at all even though he's supposed to be out there we we meet his kid i think uh, or at least there's allusions to him uh who is the little boy from the first film and it just it goes on and on with things that they were deliberately leaving for a possible sequel that they thought they were going to be able to do and it would make a lot of sense to use all of those lingering plot threads in a movie that goes into the exact same night because let's be clear just go back and watch that movie think about it logically it's not very late into the night after everything is all said and done like yeah people have stopped trick-or-treating because it's probably like what 10 or 11 at the latest yeah when michael shows up at Lori's house the whole showdown happens and it burns to the ground 
but if you're going to continue this, like it can continue in where this next movie takes place between like midnight and 3 a.m. And then the Halloween ends appropriately uh, titled. Yeah. Ends at dawn. It's November 1st of 2018. And whoever's left standing is left standing. It would also help to play that card too, because you kind of allow them to, if it takes place over the course of one night, even though, as I've already said, I don't like them stealing ideas that they've already used, but I think, you know, I don't think that a, a direct continuation is legitimately stealing the concept from Halloween 2. It's just an interesting way to play off the narrative. But you have this horrific night where all of the main females from this family get away. I really think, and I've told you several times before, that I think Lori's daughter is going to die. Right. I think Michael's going to kill her. It's going to be a downer ending for the second film where you're leading into a more hopeful and brighter third film where either Lori is dead by the end of the third film or something, but the granddaughter is going to be okay. And Michael's going to be dead. Allison survives. Like that's my perspective of how this is going to go down. I think if their plan were anything other than it taking place over the course of like a 24 hour period, that would feel a little bit iffy to me, or at least a little bit like, is Michael, after all the damage and injury that he took and barely escaping burning in that house, is is he going to come back next year? Is he going to come back a couple months later or something? Or is he just going to be this non-stoppable presence for a couple hours as we all deal with this? And he literally shakes this town to its core before all is said and done at the end of the night, you know? Uh, one thing that I think would actually benefit from this movie taking place all in the course of a few hours leading into the third film, which ends at dawn would be the idea that the pace would pick up. And what I mean by that is everybody loves the original Halloween, right? From 78. Everybody loves the whole Michael stalking, you know, the babysitter aspect, you know, him in the shadows and the movie is, I don't want to call the movie slow, because I see people try to say that's a way to kind of hinder the film and say that it makes it kind of bad is that it's kind of slow to watch. But I don't agree with that. I just feel like the pacing is fit at its own, I guess, steady motion. Whereas when you get to the sequel, when you get to the hospital film, the pace is very quick and because there's so many characters and they're coming in and out. And then Michael's on a rampage, killing literally everybody in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, you know, he's walking everywhere. You have the police running all over the town. Loomis is like at... 10 to 15 different places in that movie it's like <laughs> the pace is very insane and i think but it did it in a good way though so my whole point here is that if this movie does take place within a few hours after the dance that allison was at and after the show down at Lloyd's house this movie could have a quickened pace and i think that could be something that they could take from the original sequel and not necessarily steal it but kind of try and do their own thing with it i think that could be something that could be very cool also uh to that add on to your point i'm pretty sure there's a deleted scene where alice's boyfriend's getting arrested by the cops and allison also left early from the dance so yeah it's possible the dance was closed before it even officially you know was over it may, i mean the cops could have shut it down so it may not even be as late as 11 o'clock you know it could have been like 9 or 10 when all this stuff happened you know what i mean yeah. so again just adding more into the whole this movie could take place from like 11 or midnight all the way until like three or four in the morning and then you have halloween ends at dawn you know that could be the case where they're going with this which i'd be fine with i feel like that could make the trilogy very special and it would make michael feel like an unstoppable force of nature can, you know what i can mean I, can so. i say like one of the things that i truly truly appreciate and it, i always get really mad at john carp not mad but disappointed when Jar- john carpenter just talks so much shit about halloween 2 because I, I really really like halloween 2 and of course he says like i came up with that movie like i i locked myself in a room with a bottle of vodka and soup, a lot of beer. And it was just like a, a, a hungover drunk induced writing of this script because he didn't want to do it. He was kind he did Halloween as kind of a need way to make money and all this other stuff. But I, I always really like that movie because it just makes for a great double feature. And I think, right. and I think if they were to do it with this trilogy, I would gleefully go back and rewatch it because 
it would be hard to sit there and only watch one if it's one part of a three-part story that takes up right after each other and that that to me is the only thing that's super exciting not not the only but one of the biggest things that's super exciting about this trilogy is if it's all in one night if that's the way they want to tell the story and you can just watch that on Halloween or near Halloween October's every year where you watch the first film and you watch these three back to back to back like that would be great I, I think I would I would get into that and I would be a much bigger fan of 2018 going forward because of the sequels around it yeah it could actually make the movie better for you in terms of watching it especially if you were to binge all three movies in the future when they all come out you know yeah so. that that's something I'm, I'm really looking forward to but there's all there's always speculation I mean who knows what they're going to do I think that this is the smartest play but you know we're not paid to do this <laughs> uh, anyway guys i will i'll leave it at that mj thank you so much for joining me on this channel right now in this discussion because you and i've been really wanting to do this for a while and just kind of talk it out i hope everyone is enjoying the discussions so far on the channel like i said go make sure to check out mj's channels they're in the description section below and you are going to want to check out that loomis video if you're interested in the halloween content because i can't hype it enough that was an amazing video. Like, I think the that is the best way to not only use Loomis, but also really go a long way in explaining what happened to Lori after the events of the first film. So I'm going to leave it at that. MJ, again, thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video out to all your friends if you're interested, and share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. It's been real.